Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the voice cast. Looking at the portrayals of some of your favorite characters to figure out which one portrayed them the best. I'm your host, Justin, and with me always is Will. How's it going, everyone? It's good to be back. And now we are here to talk about a very, very precious subject between the both of us. Two very different doves of the very popular series, Berserk. Infamous for having mediocre dubs, even mediocre animation as of late, and probably the most hiatuses and the longest hiatuses of any manga out there, but also one of the most amazing, beautifully beautifully drawn, beautifully written anime of all time. And a big shout out to Miura-san, the manga who brought us Berserk. May he rest in peace. I remember during one of our earliest podcasts, um, it was for the Sonic one, that you mentioned Griffith, and during the time, I had no idea the massive popularity of Berserk. I thought it was just something that was underground. You thought it was niche. Yeah, exactly. And now that I've read it, due to the passing of Miura, I realize that that's not the case. No. It's one of the most influential pieces in the market and has inspired many mangaka. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> there's there's nothing. I mean, it's it's great. Like, what what the hell can I say about it? It was one hell of a ride. Yeah. Also. One of the probably best dubs that I've ever seen. Yeah, no. When it comes to the original 1990s dub, they just had a really solid cast and really solid performances. Like, usually everyone's like, Oh, the Japanese is way better. And this, is one of those, this is one of those occasions where the English dub is just too damn good. And I realized that the ADR director, Michael Sinternicla, who you may know as Leonardo from the 2003 Ninja Turtles series, or Dean Venture from the Venture Brothers, Pretty much all the cast came from all of his past work. So it was just a classic case of just expanding your network and finding people to actually fit the roles instead of just, oh, oh, Ted from next door, we need you because we need to be at the exact same time as the Japanese. Or the other mentality of this person's a big name, so we have to include them, right? Right, right, because big names sell, right? Right. Yeah, remember when anime was actually done like like a business, you know? It took planning and shit. Now it's just for the sake of speed, but that doesn't lead to a better product, you know? The 90s anime is one of my favorite dubs that I've ever seen, and 2016 exists. Some of the performances were really good. It's just that the animation was abysmally terrible, which further poisoned the well for people to actually enjoy Berserk. Again, I'm part of a lot of anime communities. It's it's where I grew up in. Fans of Berserk, we get kind of preacher-like when it comes to spreading, hey, you know, this shit's really good. Give it a chance. And then when people on their own go to search it up, the first thing they see is, oh, hey, wait, the, 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 there's a 2016 anime? I'm going to jump right in. Hey, this sucks. Berserk sucks. You're stupid. It's like, you idiot. Read! Yeah, it, it's... Read it's, before anything! I feel like that a problem with that is also it's very much a Ghostbusters 2016, ironically enough, situation yeah. where it's like, call it Berserk Continuation or something, because it's like, this is definitely not where it's starting. I mean, I think that they're trying to pick up from the Golden Age Arc Trilogy movies, which were in line to prepare everyone for the 2016 anime. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think that the movies do the whole CG 2D hybrid pretty okay. I mean, there's some some weird shit, but I don't think that it's awful. And, you know, I can see CG and 2D working with Berserk. I think of the 1970s Lord of the Rings movies by Ralph Bakshi, where it's like, the rotoscope dark riders where it's like all the main characters frodo sam whoever were 2d and these monsters were rotoscope i can see that kind of working the same way here because it gives them an out of worldly they're not supposed to be there naturally feel and that's horrifying seeing these little hobbitses get chased down by these weirdly realistic shadowy monsters that have been filtered to look even more horrifying 
Yeah, exactly. Um, that's not what we got. We got something a lot more awkward. I mean, everyone's talked shit about that. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Let's talk about what we do best, and that's comparing voice actors. And I hope that we have enough guts to to talk about all these... Jesus Christ, I'm a loser. That was a good one. Be proud of that. Keep that in. Keep this in. You made you made you made a very bold move. Good. <laughs> I belly flopped in the pool. Hell yeah. So we've got Mark Dorison, or I'm sorry, Jordison, because he's French, from the 97s anime, Kaiji Tong from the 2016 series, and a bonus for this podcast, we're also talking about the cast for Sword of the Berserk, Guts is Rage. The Sega Dreamcast game. Yeah, one of the earliest hack and slash games, even before the original Devil May Cry, with Michael Bell. Hey, Casca, where are you going? Oh. She probably wants to see that show. The town's right over there. Well, why don't you take her? Forget it, Puck. I don't have time to waste on something like that. So tell me, as a person who really deep dived in, What's a general statement that you can give on the performances of Michael, Mark, and Kaiji? Oh, God. Like, one of them doesn't try enough, one of them is just right, and one of them tries too hard. You know, that, 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 that's a pretty good average, actually. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with Michael Bell, because he is technically the first voice actor for Guts. Ever. Michael Bell, the voice of The Fear from Metal Gear Solid 3... Vault is coated in the venom of the Brazilian wandering spider. Soon, a most exquisite pain will engulf your entire body. Your limbs will be paralyzed. Your lungs cease to draw breath. Eventually, your heart will stop beating. Ah, but what fun would that be? Lawrence from Ratchet and Clank. Lawrence! 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 Of assistance? Annihilate him! Just kidding. You've reached my holographic voicemail. Leave your name and a brief message. Ta-ta! And Chaz and Drew Finster from the original Rugrats. First of all, this house, all this stuff, you're gonna have to get rid of it right away. This isn't happening. Why can't I wake up? Not my elephant! I'll never give up my glass elephant! <laughs> I know. I'll call Pat Sajak. He'll know what to do. Chess, pull yourself together. It's over. He gives. He, 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 he sounds like he's not taking the role entirely seriously. You know, like he's reading it as like a, a, as a bored kid reading Shakespeare you know, for class. I mean, my thing overall is that. First of all, like when you really listen to Michael Bell, all that I can hear from his voices is Drew from Rugrats. And Drew is a great character, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> of all the people that you should not be reminded of, when you look at fucking Guts, it should not be a fucking limp-dicked pencil pusher. <laughs> <laughs> Who could barely stand up to his wife. <laughs> and don't call me Snuckums. Okay. Ugh. Yes, dear. Also, very <laughs> kind of important. The subtext is guts his rage. He doesn't rage. He's he's the most that he does is just a very grumpy. Where's Casca? Oh, I guess we need to get food. Uh... <laughs> and you know, this is a character who is known for his rage. This is the rage character of all rage characters. But then the performance gets fucking saved and immortalized beyond all others with Marc Deraison. You're right. We are mortal and fragile. But even if we are tortured or wounded, we'll fight to survive. Uh, you should feel the pain we feel and understand. Uh, no! Stop it! Don't kill me! And what is it you said when those people begged you for mercy? Uh, uh. 
Marc de Raison. We've talked about him a lot on this. Uh, his more famous roles is Zorro from the One Piece dub. Hey, Mr. One, tell me something. When Crocodile trained you, did he say sit, heal, and roll over? Your attitude's the pits. Cherry, peach, or apricot? So tell me, does he give you nice doggy biscuits when he wants you to play fetch? And you, all buck, no bite. Woof, woof, woof. You're not funny. Ging Fries from Hunter Hunter, Gon's dad. Jean? Hmm? Can we talk more later on? If you can. <clears throat> yeah, that might be kind of tough. I'm a pretty busy guy, you know. Quit messing around, Jean! You call yourself a father? What the hell? Why don't you go screw yourselves? You should let Leorio punch you again! Hey! I've heard enough! You wanna fight? If you got a problem, then why don't you bring it on? And George Joestar, Jonathan's dad, from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. This man, what has he said, Inspector? Did he ever tell you that I gave him the ring? Aye, he swore up and down. He is innocent. Let him go at once, Inspector. But sir, this man stole from you. But for Providence's hand in my life, I might as well have done the same. Sell this ring, if you may ease your family's burden by it. Walk an honest path henceforth, and I give it gladly. Th this is guts. This is guts. It, it, it really interests me, because what I love about Dorai Son so much is that he has such a flexible voice. Like, if you want him to sound funny, he can do funny. If you want him to do serious, sure. Want to be a badass? That definitely works, too. And Guts is such a complicated character that, that, yeah, you need someone like that. Guts can be cocky, but he can also be dire and serious. But he also has his moments of tenderness, which yeah. he's not just a dark, brooding character. He has many layers of his personality and his ability to just show his emotions, which is also just straight up part of the story. Him coming to terms with emotions, him overcoming mental and emotional breakdowns and hard walls, and becoming a better person. And you see that with that I saw him. Because you start off with Guts as this standoffish, kind of crackly kid, and then over time he grows to trust people, trust his companions in the bands of the hog, and he gets a lot warmer in the voice. A little more cocky. Much more cocky. But he was still a cocky little shit at the beginning. But it was consistent. It was a consistent upbringing of the character. It, it does fascinate me how he doesn't have a strange voice, which I usually like to hear. But somehow he can make his average voice come off as such a badass and it works. I mean, it's like people are shitting on us during our four kids one piece about Zorro. And it's like people who don't know Berserk were like, uh, how can you say that Chris Sabat... And not a good Zoro. Because Zoro is a funny character. He does write that line very well of being funny and being a badass. He's cocky. He is cocky. And in the One Piece dub, all of his fucking snarky ass comments to whoever he was fighting or calling Usopp a chicken and making buck, 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 buck noises. That added an, a layer of, like, okay, I like these characters more because they just seem more funny and lively. Now we just have deep, dark voice Chris Sabat voicing Zoro, which is just boring. Like, if Mark Terraison is the example of a normal-sounding voice that's just overall good, Chris Sabat is the opposite. It's a normal-sounding, just-a-guy voice. But it, it, it's just, oh, it's him. Neat. It's a true statement and a true evidence that a good, well-performed, normal voice doesn't need special splashes or effects. A well-played role is a well-played role. Yeah, I mean, like, people like to defend Funimation's One Piece dub by saying that, oh, the manga chose the voice actors themselves. The, the, the mangaka was heavily involved in the 4Kids English dub, too. I mean, if you listen to the Japanese, 4Kids, and Funimation back-to-back, -back, 
Jodai Son sounds so much closer to the Japanese than Sabat doing his cliche badass voice. Like I said, Zoro is a badass, but he's also funny because he had to react to the, all the idiots around, around them. And even in turn, being an idiot sometimes himself. Honestly, if anyone's mad about this, send me a link of Chris Sabat being funny with the voice that he does for Zoro. Vegeta doesn't count because that's a voice designed for Vegeta. But let's transition to our final Guts candidate, Kaiji Tan. <sighs> Distractions never end. What's there for you? Since you've already come this far, <sighs> I guess I might as well tell you. <sighs> That's the estate of Count Lansdowne, the former governor of Midland's western outskirts. He loved. He tries too hard. Faust from Guilty Gear Strive. Face, Face flesh. flesh! No other option. Bill from B Stars. So you just gotta understand. <laughs> Take it easy. Hear me out. It's easy to live like you, lurking in the shadows. But unlike you, I want the spotlight. This is justifiable doping. That's all. Why would you understand when you avoid the truth and act like a fool for the sake of the herbivores? <laughs> and the newest voice of Ami Damaru from Shaman King. You could survive without relying on anyone. You had a fierce will to live, yet you lived alone. All this to validate your mother's heroic sacrifice. During those horrible times, if I didn't have a friend like Mosuke, I don't know how I would have survived either. Kaiji is a good actor. He has a good, gravelly, gruff voice but the lengths he goes to to portray Guts is a little excessive. Berserk is good for its subtleties, because be in between the big action scenes, it's very subtle interactions because post-Eclipse, Guts isn't very social to anyone. So when Guts is being genuinely quiet and doesn't need to growl and, and throw a fit, he is a bit of conversationalist. Yeah, exactly. Guts can rage, but he's also calm and very attentive in battle. Jodai Son makes it look easy, because whenever Kaiji Tong tries to do that deep, gravelly voice, it makes his badass sound like a teenager trying to sound tough. Angst. I'm sure we've all done it, too. Or a majority of, like, people. If you don't stop talking to her, I'm gonna rip out your skull and check down your neck! <laughs> and then you end up sounding like a really creaky, cringy idiot, and everyone makes fun of you for it. All, uh, some of his effort should have been put into Michael Bell, and then we would have a very balanced gut set. Which is weird, because he plays Bill in Beastars, and Bill is charismatic! He's a, he's a tiger, but he's charismatic, he's rough, he can get competitive. Kaiji would have used the Bill performance, mind you, the Bill performance came years after, so maybe Guts was the learning experience. Maybe we would have had a really good sounding Guts if he toned it back and just played it like Bill, but with a little more seriousness. Think about it this way, right? So, the whole thing about Guts is that he started angry because he was born on the battlefield and he was fucked over by people like Gambino. I mean, like I said, Kaiji Tong sounds like a teenager trying to sound tough, and that's exactly what Guts is. And if you think about it, Berserk 2016, that's exactly where he starts. Kaiji Tong, the actor, started voicing Guts on the battlefield. He didn't have that time, like Jodai Son, to actually voice him growing up. And a lot of the voice speaking interactions that Jodai Son did in the second episode of Berserk. Yeah, Kaiji Tong didn't have any of that. He didn't have the setup of Guts talking like, Kid, you're a genius. You're, 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 I, I, I can give you status. I can make you a noble. I just want my money. Please, just listen. Don't touch me! Don't you ever touch me. Oh, that being said, I don't think that the 97 dub is perfect. Like, there are one or two strange lines like that one. Like, 
Jodai Son performs that very strangely. And I do believe that the movies did help flesh that out a little bit. You know, like it gave all of these actors, most of which who did reprise their roles, a chance to come back with more experience. And it definitely does show. Yeah, they, 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 they started off with a very nice bloom. And then when they were revisited, they matured so, so well. Griffith. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys know who's winning this. But start, starting off is the great Kevin T. Collins in the 97 anime. I can sense no anger from him. No rage. No fear. He is empty. Present. Clear. Is your wish to be free of me so strong? No, I will not allow it. Victory will be won by the first strike. He will attack high. As he does, I must parry, disengage, and lunge for his neck. But if I miss my mark by any small degree, I could kill him. No, I cannot allow this. If he will not be mine, his life is forfeit. Okay, there are some times when there's most the most that you could say about an actor or a performance is it's good. It's like, how much can you actually say? But there are those moments where it's like, you can't judge it by itself. You need to see what someone does wrong in order to make a comparison. Mm hmm. And Steve Stanley in the 26 series is that litmus test to understand. What you need to do right with Griffith. I see you haven't changed. Your sword still moves before your mouth. Actually... Don't talk about me. You're exactly the same as the day we met. Why the hell did you come here? For you, of course. <sighs> Things at that tower were rather chaotic. So much so, I didn't get to speak to you alone. I thought this place more fitting for our meeting, since the Band of the Hawk has reunited. Kevin T. Collins is in complete control of his voice, and... and He portrays this melodious, somber-sounded, well-spoken, charismatic man who, just hearing his voice and charisma alone, you'll follow him to the ends of the earth. There's just a level of control for Kevin T. Collins, which I normally do the thing where I bring up things that Kevin T. Collins has been in but hard to do because he didn't really do much dub wise which is a shame because he's a great actor he was mainly a broadway guy which you can definitely tell by the control of his voice and god how appropriate is it for griffith to have a fucking broadway shakespearean man voicing him because he is such a shakespearean character a, a man of jovial nature of ambition of Someone that you would trust with your life, but at the same time, is just every moment planning that his next move to bring the downfall of all of his enemies to make sure that absolutely everything goes according to plan. Even throwing other people into the fray and abandoning them when he doesn't need them. Like, for example, Griffith didn't have a good start with his Band of the Hawk. So what did he do? He pimped himself out to some lord for some cash. As a young boy, he 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 boy slaved himself to some uh, pedophilic lord of this castle. So he's like, even Casca, the, the the scene where Casca's like, "Why did you do it?" If I'm going to achieve a kingdom of my own, I'm gonna have to start learning how to make sacrifices. I needed the money. I needed the equipment he provided them, or having guts. Like, hey, guts. While I'm doing my thing with the nobles, I need you to kill someone for me. And then he sends Guts to go kill the one of the people who would be next in line for the throne. And his kid. By accident, of course. But once, like, Griffith, Guts is like, I killed a kid. And Griffith's like, okay, so? What does that have to do with me? But at the same time, while he was schmoozing and talking to royalty and gaining the heart and the love of the princess, he sent her mother and the two of the king's advisors into a... He found out where they were boarded all the doors and windows, and set them on fire. But made it seem like he had nothing to do with it. This is the epitome of, this is how you make a villain. Or a hero, depending on people's perspective. 
Griffith did nothing wrong. <laughs> I'll get to that. <laughs> so, what I think that Will is trying to say is that Kevin T. Collins portrays Griffith as someone who can go through a lot of these obstacles and going heads over tails around aristocrats and all that in order to get what he wants. Not anyone can do this. You know, aristocrats, you know, they are very pampered, spoiled people. Fickle. Yeah, very fickle. fickle. So even the slightest seeming of objection towards whatever they demand could mean that you're fucked. Griffith plans would be fucked. And that's why I don't like Steve Staley. Steve Staley, voice of Koji Minamoto from Digimon Frontier. Neji Hugo from Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. You thought you could be Hokage? It's absurd. Never. Do you think anyone can be Hokage? That all it takes is a little hard work? Open your eyes. People's limitations are set, fixed, and unchangeable. Only a fool wastes his time trying to become something he can never be. And Toshiro Hutsugaya from Bleach. Wow! Renji is in bad shape. What a mess. Toshiro! Hey, hey, mind your manners now. You still have to address me as a captain, you know. Oh, you can forget about that. What is it with you captains always creeping around silently? And what were you doing sneaking up behind me like that anyway? He goes a bit deeper with Griffith, and it almost sounds right. My problem, and I don't know how this happened, but he sounds too angry. There's this undercurrent of anger, and that has never been Griffith. Griffith is completely in control. Not always. There was the anger at losing guts that forced him to force himself on Princess Charlotte. Well, y y And then there was him being Femto, where Femto was just a being of anger and spite. Well, yeah, but... But then he, but look, then he sheds the skin of Femto to become the Falcon of Light. Look, in most situations, Griffith can't control his emotions to have it under control. Those are flukes. He has the best poker face of any villain. Yeah. So it's like, can you imagine <laughs> audience? Imagine if a king wants to rape you, right? If you, <laughs> if, if you were even slightly angry about that, do you think that now nah, he would still probably rape you, but you get what I mean. It's like, you have to be, very much in control of your emotions in order to do the things that Griffith does. And I I don't get it, because it's like, you could probably spin Kevin T. Collins' performance as boring. Like, technically what I'm saying is Steve Staley is putting more emotion into it. So why is that? Steve Staley is technically doing more with his voice than Kevin T. Collins does, but it just doesn't match the character at all. In contrast to Guts, who most things that he does is extravagant, everything that Griffith does is subtle. Subtle. Submissive. You think that if, 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 if you didn't know who Griffith was and you saw Griffith and Guts, you'd think Guts is the leader. No, Guts is the dog. Griffith's the one holding the leash. By the way, a lot of Fujos, you want that. No shit. I know you're out there. I'm calling you out. But even in, like, a noble, if it's like, Guts is such a fierce warrior, but no warrior is without their great tactician. And then they praise Griffith for all of Guts' everything. Guts won them a war. Griffith gets all the fame because, you know, like an aristocrat, we know aristocracy. He may be a lowborn, but he knows how to act of one of our own, so we're going to treat him as such. And even that, Griffith's not a pushover. Griffith is a force to be reckoned with. But let's look at their weapons. Guts uses a big fuck-off sword. Griffith uses a saber. Griffith's fencing style is subtle, controlled, passive. But he always gets the job done in the most elegant way possible. How does he deal with most political situations in the most eloquent way possible? Like when we're looking at a famous moment. He gets, someone tries to assassinate him when they go on, when, the, when they do the hunt in the original Berserk 1997. Griffith gets shot with an arrow, and his bailet saves him. 
Now, when a normal person would be like, Someone almost killed me! I want revenge! Griffith is like, Oh no. Oh. I guess it's just an accident. He made himself so submissive that everyone's like, Hey, go find that assassin! Why would he attack Griffith? Griffith does nothing but good. But then, in the background, while Griffith has it, while everyone's doting over Griffith, he's like, So Guts, I researched the poison that was on the dart that was aimed for me. It was of this special plant that's very exotic and very expensive. And by looking through the ledgers of the castle, I found the source of the cash flow to buy such a thing. And then Griffith went out to find the assassin who shot him and say, Okay, I'll give you some money. Tell me who did it. I know you used this poison. Who did it? Oh, it was the king's... It, 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 was, it was the king's brother. Right. Thank you very much. Gods, I need you to kill someone for me. He pulled so many strings behind closed doors, which is a great villain trait. Subtlety. A real taskmaster. Someone behind the curtain. And that's why Griffith is one of the best villains of all time. Well, he doesn't appear much in the in Guts's rage, so... He doesn't appear at all. Guts mentions him once, and I wonder who just randomly buys this without knowing what Berserk is. I'm sure people would have been completely lost. Like, who's Griffith? And then you actually read it, and you're like, oh, that's, that's Griffith. Well, Griffith wasn't in it, though. Puck definitely was. <sighs> Voiced by Cam Clark in the game. Uh, listen, big man, if someone is thanking you, the least you can do is listen. And <laughs> while you're at it, we need food and some money. Some fine wine will do nicely for me. What the heck is that? A bug? How rude, girly. I'm not a bug, I'm an elf. An elf, damn it! Haven't you ever seen an elf? I'm <laughs> the adorable Puck. Mm, no. And while he doesn't have a speaking line in the 90s anime or the film trilogy, Sarah Williams takes up the shaft in 2016. Well, let's start with the video game since we're still on the topic. Cam Clark, voice of Leonardo from the first TMNT cartoon. Think, what would Donatello do in a case like this? Donatello? I don't know. Maybe this! <gasps> Me, Rex. You, April. My job is to serve and protect April. Yeah. And? And the turtles. <sighs> Donatello is right. Applied science always triumphs. And Liquid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Yes, Big Chungus, the world-renowned meme of an oversized cartoon rabbit. What does some dumb joke have to do with your plan? Everything, Snake. This isn't about jokes. This is about legacy. Do you even know who Big Chungus is? He's just some cartoon rabbit. Not just some rabbit. The most famous rabbit in cinematic history. The one and only Bugs Bunny. This should have been the idealized voice for Guts. A Bugs Bunny-esque, smart aleck, little fairy dude who does nothing but snark on people and laugh at them. Or also cause trouble for himself. You mean... You mean the voice for Puck? Yeah, Puck. You said the voice for Guts? Sorry. Is, is this fucking Bugs Bunny-esque? <laughs> I think Derison could do it. Probably. Yeah, Cam Clark was definitely one of the best performances in that. But then again, it's Cam Clark. He's one of the best performers out there. Yeah. To this day. He's annoying at the start, don't get me wrong. But he does, he does grow on you. Guts, Puck is supposed to be annoying. He does grow on you. Both are aspects of actually dealing with guts in the manga. This has become the voice of Puck that I hear in my head when I read the manga, which is really weird for a 90s anime video game. Yeah. I was watching the cutscenes, and I was surprised how drawn in I can get, and Puck was talking, and I was surprised how not taken aback I was. I was just, just into it while the villain was doing his big old monologue, Look, normal anime didn't have good dubs back then. Don't quote me in, in the comments. I'm sure I'm wrong. But it's like... For, <laughs> do you have any <laughs> how fucking crazy this is to me? Because <laughs> it's like... 
the fucking annoying sidekick character is the one that I'm like, oh yeah, let's go with the video game version. Yeah, the be the, the the creature that's supposed to either make you ha ha funny or fuck it. Like, what, why are you taking up desperate screen time slash panel space? No one. Why why are you a thing? A lot of people hate Puck, and they're wrong. But it's okay to be wrong. I like Puck. And our artist Kelly also started reading it. She likes him too. I love Puck. He's a, he he he's an absolutely f- well needed little shit. Puck is basically an adolescent elf out in the bizarre world. So Cam Clark plays a natural childish impish nature, which just fits so well. Absolutely. And Sarah Williams is a girl again. And it makes Puck sound like. If you just showed Puck's face and nothing else, you could easily confuse Puck for... Helping them? Show some responsibility! Oh, I have a question! What's this heavy lump you're carrying? I'm amazed I'm still alive to tell the tale! Hey, look! I'm almost positive those nasty bandits have a lot of buddies nearby, and those guys are really skilled fighters. If you're not out of here in a hurry, you could be a big tr- Yeah, we talked about this in our Shaman King video. Look, I'm not saying that women cannot voice more feminine-sounding characters, but this just does not work. Like, I do not see- I, I get the idea of a fairy-sounding kind of feminine, but- this is going way too far. And Sarah Williams does not usually portray boys. She portrays some great tomboys. But that's not the same. Yeah. I mean, hell, here's the confusing thing. There's another fairy in Berserk that's with the party who, who is a female elf. And when watching the 2016, you sometimes can't tell the difference. Yeah. Who's talking. I feel so bad for Tara Sands, who did voice Evalira, because. I think to compensate for Sarah Williams sounding like a girl, I think the Terra Sands had to go even higher. So that makes you the wind itself, huh? Thanks for all of your hard work. The name's Puck. What are you talking about? You are aware that there are ancestors, aren't you? Uh-huh. You're a pixie, right, Puck? Don't you know pixies and air spirits belong to the same family? There are all kinds. I can't believe this! I've been an air spirit this entire time! I've spent ages thinking I was a sparkly chestnut! Yeah. Speaking of which, Sarah Williams, some of those some of those great tomboys are Peacock from Skullgirls. Seriously, Doc, shut it! Get to the good part. Put some coffee on and give me Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, and Honduras, Guiana, and still Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, and French Guiana, Barbados, and Guam. And no known from Kill a Kill. Prepare to be pummeled cheerfully, jauntily, and utterly one sidedly. Hm. The sky is mine, goddammit. You stinking bitch! You think this changes anything? Ha! I don't care if you can fly, you're still toast! You can't stop! performance but yeah no sarah williams plays very spunky brash natured girls but it just doesn't fit for puck because pucks well i can't say subtle but he's not punkish he's like the shakespearean character he's named after he, he's a mischievous mysterious little trickster who when push comes to shove will never put up a front unless it's a child or a woman when a monster comes up he's just gonna be like nope no 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 i'm over here you can do it, Guts! And I can see that working. We need a woman who knows how to talk like a boy if you really think that a woman should voice Puck. And I see the logic, you know, the, the little fairy psychic character voiced by a woman. That sounds obvious, but surprisingly, again, the fucking 90s video game beats this super CGI advanced 2016 show. What the fuck happened here? Be, be careful of that monkey's paw wish of having a of having a, a woman who knows how to voice boys, or we might get a Tara Strong puck. 
in a Thundercats Roar parody cartoon of Berserk. Oh, God. <laughs> Cursed, in it. <laughs> Embrace the psych backlash. Yeah. Casca. Casca was and is a great character. Originally portrayed by B.J. Ward in the Dreamcast game, who voiced Princess Allura from the original Voltron. The people of Eris are grateful to our friends, the Voltron Force. Thelma Dinkley in most of the 90s Scooby-Doo movies. Wait, Thorn, we need your help. Me? What can I do? We need you to read that spell to defeat Sarah Ravencroft. Are you crazy? I told you! I'm not really a witch. I can't help you against her. But you said you were part Wiccan, right? Only one sixteen. Doesn't matter. You still have Wiccan blood, which means only you can read the spell that will send Sarah Ravencroft back to where she came from. Forget it. You don't even have the book. No, Scooby does. And Janya from the Wonder Twins. Form of a mouse. A pterodactyl. Space insect. A vial of water. We have a pretty classic actress voicing Casca for this game, in which she only has like one or two speaking lines before it's just. Uh... Well, it goes deeper than that. Because. Yeah, she only has one or two lines, and any half-decent VA could do it, but I think it's important to recognize the context of when she does talk. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times that Casca talks is through cutscenes, because when they, from the point they were starting at in Guts' Rage, something absolutely horrible happened to Casca, and her mind was just broken. Yeah. For those of you who don't know about this... This was, you know, un unlike just slapping a couple of chapters into a game, Miura actually wrote the story itself, himself, and he had this interesting idea of this disease that's kind of similar to the Black Plague, where people get it and they turn into monsters and demons, but at the same time, all of their wounds are healed. It's like a Faustian bargain. Yeah, the king of this village, his wife was sincerely ill. And he's telling this to Gutson, his company, that he tried to use this MacGuffin in order to make her better, but... The Bailet. Not the Bailet, the... What the fuck is that, like, witches... What the fuck is that witch plant thing you pull it up and it screams? Mandragora. Yeah, it, the story had a lot to do with, with mandrakes, and that's one of the bosses that does take Casca. And once you beat it and you save Casca very briefly she recognizes guts Casca Casca hang in there my love Gatsu uh, and how does she greet this man who fights tooth and nail for her safety Gatsu my dear I was dreaming a really bad dream. Casca. 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 is right after Guts comes back for her. After fighting, I think, the moth butterfly chick? Yes. Really think about that. The biggest amount of character development and hope for the series came from a Dreamcast game that probably no one in America bought. <laughs> Why was this localized? If you're missing Miura's stuff, then kill an hour and watch the sort of Berserk cutscenes. You might dig it. Wasn't my personal favorite, but it was enjoyable. Yeah. In the 97, we would get Carrie Karanen 
whose more famous roles other than Casca would be Caroline and Justine from Persona 5, the twins, and Lavenza, their combination. Know your place, inmate! As wardens, we simply feel satisfaction in seeing your rehabilitation progress. It's like you forget where you are, inmate. You've got some real guts, though. With that spirit, you should have no trouble making progress. If you have the will to continue your penal labor, we can grant you greater freedom within this prison. And Misato Katsurugi from the newest Evangelion movie. All hands! Battle stations condition two! Mari? Unit 8, still not ready! Asuka, the interview's over. Take him to quarantine. Listen closely, Shinji. Don't do it, Shinji! <laughs> You're staying with us. Protect Unit 1 at all costs. Halt all operations except main engine outfitting. All personnel, prepare for takeoff. And holy shit does she hit Casca on the fucking head with how good she performs as Casca. If only I could control how I feel, it would be so much easier for me. Somehow I convinced myself that I could live with it. Even if I couldn't be his woman, I could still be by Griffith's side as his sword. Let's start basic. She had more than five lines. Yeah. That wasn't, uh, uh. But she hit the ground running when she picked up Casca. This woman warrior who feels that she needs to prove herself that even a woman, in a, in a man's world, a woman can be strong, and a woman can be a savior. She can do more for herself, being born from poverty, and being born as the oppressed sex, to become Griffith's right-hand woman. And saying that, she is the right hand of Griffith for a reason. She has more attitude and more guts than most others until Guts shows up. She she she's a boss. She's a leader. She does what she needs to do. And when the order was called, she's the first one to obey the master's orders. Which also just complicates her because she wants to achieve so much. She wants to just achieve a life that she could be happy about. But for the longest time, being with Griffith was her happy. She was happy with him. She liked fighting for him, and even in her dreams, she wants to just one day no longer fight, be that housewife that every woman at the time, or written in that kind of uh, world or scenario, just wants to be a, a wife, a, a husband, a child, good income, no more fighting, no more strife. And then Guts comes along, and Guts is this wild animal who immediately challenges the presence of Griffith, which just upsets her so much, because th this absolute nobody kid comes out of nowhere into my band of the hawk and tries to square up to our leader. I don't like this man. He's not tactical. He's rough. He's brash. But over time... She would just see Guts' true personality. Guts is a man who cares. Guts is strong. Guts takes care of his units. Takes care of his friends. She sees Guts' worth, and she grows up as a character. She learns to like him, and then she learns to love him. Casca is a very complicated character, and Karenin plays Casca so goddamn well. And you need to understand her place in her career at that time she was not doing much of anything what were these really early ones um xena flowers from sailor moon r mokuba from Yu-Gi-Oh, which isn't a tiny character but nowhere near the range that she had to do for casca and for what she did with her little experience she did very well again there were some awkward points as is with any growing pain it's like even if B.J. Ward and, soon enough, Karen Strassman did speak as much as she did... It wouldn't compare. It wouldn't compare. It's just the spice is so good. And I need you to consider something. Um, behind the voice actors, Katka is not Carrie Kiernan's number one role. Her most well-known role is Satsuki from Kill a Kill. And, of course, I think that everyone should read Berserk if they're not disturbed by it. 
but just the fact that, you know, Sasuke and Kasuka are very similar in the sake of they are so determined for their goals and just probably some of the best badass women in anime. Human nature, Matoi. Prosperity leads to greed. Greed leads to their downfall. One taste of a life of affluence and they're enslaved. Slaves to a system which I created. They are nothing more than pigs. Pigs in human clothing. Pigs that must be tamed by force! And for the fact that, you know, it's very easy to say, and I do believe that her voicing Casca did help her gain such a huge fan base with Satsuki. Or in the anime that I alluded to, where she was a she was a teacher who was a Yakuza prince, who was a, who was the daughter of a Yakuza, who was, who was the daughter of a fucking Yakuza head. And Griffith is one of her punks, and the voice of Griffith, Kevin T. Collins, is one of her punk students. That helped form her career, portraying strong, stern woman. And not everything that she's done has been a badass, but that is what encapsulates her career for me, because that is some of her best work. Actually, uh, funnily enough, when, when it comes to Karen Strassman's more submissive and broken portrayal of Casca, it's actually kind of poetic when you think about it. This strong woman who... She got stabbed by a paralyzing poison a after Mike Pollock's character, Adon, said, after I paralyze you, I'm going to rape you. And then all my boys are going to rape you. <laughs> she used her cold, calculating wit to put him in a situation where, yeah, I'm going to be paralyzed. Oh, no. But I still have time, right? And then she kicks his ass. And holy shit. Karen Strassman. I know you. You'll fight your own war, right? You have to leave. Take off by yourself. Snore. Voice of Colin Stottfeldt from Code Geass. Okay, hey, no worries. There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay, then. You don't have to stare at me like a wounded animal. I was just trying to... <laughs> Soy phone from Bleach. I'm not impressed. For someone who spent as many years hidden away as you have, it doesn't seem to me like you've gotten any stronger, Yorovichi. I noticed there was a Shihoin symbol on the Tentoken flying cloak that Ryoka Kid was wearing. You gave him that, didn't you? And Igis from Persona. This spot will be perfect. Because I wish to always be by his side. I guess. Is there a problem? Uh... Look, even if she had as many lines as Carrie Kiernan did throughout the series and the movies, or even had that twist that BJ Ward did in Sword of the Berserk, she is so fucking boring. She's plain. It's one line, and that might not be fair. But it, it, in, I have never felt so bored after one line in my entire fucking life. But looking at what she previously done, the characters are too subtle, too submissive, too not Casca. I mean, the closest you'll get is Soifon, but eh, then again, I think that's kind of one of the main things that modern mo mo modern age voice actors miss. We need more Karenins. I love strong women. I love strong women voice actors. She get fucking Karen even did a good job as Misato Katsuragi from Neon Genesis Evangelion, a woman who's supposed to be in charge and in control, but never is because fucking Evangelion's a mess. Or when Karen plays Caroline and Justine. From Persona 5, these two little girl, but they're wardens for your main character, the prison, who's trapped in a prison. You get one voice who just wants to see you fail because they want to punish you. The other wants to see you be uplifted, but is a stern taskmaster who is like, you mess up once and I'm going to let my partner have at you. And her fucking partner constantly smacks the fucking bars with her police baton, telling you to shut up and sit down. God, that's a good fucking performance. And you just don't get it, man. 
We need more Karanans. Tangent over. The last voice that we have for Sword of the Berserk, Nosferatu Zod was a boss in the game. Voiced by Peter Lorre. Lurie. Peter Lurie, rather fa- rather famous for um, really deep voice, but rather pleasant characters, like Hashirama Senju from Naruto. Hmm. Who the hell are you? The fourth Hokage, sir. Oh ho! The fourth Hokage, huh? Nice, nice. So who is the fifth then? Your granddaughter, Princess Tsunade. <laughs> Tsuna, huh? Is the village okay? Is there a reason to worry? She was my first grandchild. I spoiled her rotten. In the end, she even picked up my gambling habit, I'm afraid. <laughs> and Vulcan Raven from Metal Gear Solid. Welcome, Cossack. This is the end of the road for you. Right, my friends? Listen, they agree. Ravens aren't scavengers like most people think. They're simply returning to the natural world, that which is no longer needed. Sometimes they even attack wounded foxes. You were the one in the M1 tank? Must have been a tight fit for a big boy like you. <laughs> but that was no true battle. Very evident, strong voices. Which is perfect for a big, strong, horrifying demon monster. The problem is, this giant monster is drowned in audio mixing. It's as if he wasn't even in the room. It's like they phoned him in. There's, there's no subtlety. There's no complex... Like, Zod's not a monster. He's very intelligent and just has this complex thirst for battle. He's borderline Shakespearean with how he monologues about, like, the ebb and flow of things. And even his relation to, to Guts is like, Guts, I see a lot of myself in you. I like you. I want to fight you. I don't want to kill you, but I don't want to fight you. I have to kill you because Griffith says so. It's the way things have to go. But Guts, just join our side, man. Yeah. And I'm not saying that an actor shouldn't need audio mixing in order to make them sound like more of a monster, but this is just layers and laser, layers and lasers of audio effects and noise, and it's drowning. It's like if you had a nice roast beef sound and you fucking drowned it in mustard, like that's gonna make it any better. A little bit of mustard is good on roast beef. I but hate making mustard, roast, but I love mustard. Is this fucking kill me every time with that? But sorry, that was that was an Oni place thing where it's like you just you just shout the Back to the Future theme out of context. I don't know why it is the funniest thing. It's when two people disagree on something. It's like they disagree. End of movie. Because I just love this implication that it's like, once the person disagrees, they just run away with, like, fucking anime arms running behind them and shit. Da, 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 da. Um, J. David Brimmer is a lot better. This is the first time (laughs) that I have been so deeply by the sword of a human. <laughs> Throughout my 300 years of slaughtering, you are the first one who has wounded me like this. J. David Bremer. Voice of Dr. Proctor from Pokemon. Yeah, that that one episode during the Pokemon the Indigo League where 
Pikachu got sick and they needed a doctor immediately. So they took him to a human hospital. He's like, but I'm a human doctor. Pokemon and humans are basically the same. Except like basically some are on fire and some are like 90% water. <laughs> so this average normal dude has to like start working on Pokemon. And all along the way, just being a very charismatic borderline ladies man flirting with underage girls. Chansey, bring me a hypodermic of anesthetic. Chansey! Doctor! <laughs> I wanted you to cure it, not kill it! It's just sleeping. Now I can perform the procedure. Huh? Why help them? They're from Team Rocket! To a doctor, a patient is a patient. There's no such thing as good guys or bad guys. You know, I just thought of this just the other day, but it's like, I don't understand why people want to be veteran... Want to be... Veterinarians? Yeah, vet... Fuck, wow, why can't I say it? why they want to be vets because it's like i get that they love animals but do you love animals enough to literally open them up and see their insides or watch them die put them down yeah put down like another voice he vo another voice he did odion ishtar from Yu-Gi-Oh. a card like none you've ever seen what's going on What's the deal with that building, Merrick? The structure behind me is the ancient Temple of the Kings. And in front of the temple, I'll lay two cards face down as an extra boundary of protection. And lastly, Crocodile from One Piece. Probably his best role out of these. <laughs> the Four Kids version. <laughs> the Four Kids version of... Uh, that's, yeah, the Four Kids dub. The best version of Crocodile. <laughs> this is like, like you've seen anything besides the Desert Doodoo -doo clip. You put no time or effort into planning your attack. <gasps> Goodbye, Straw Hat. Desert Gerasol! <laughs> A desert toilet. A lovely way to describe it, Straw Hat. That makes you desert doo-doo. No, There's water no, under no, all that sand. No, Sucks no, everything no, no, down. I mean, he has the perfect voice for an imposing character like Crocodile. Oh yeah, I I I think he's has a great villain voice, and he does good here too. He does need some audio mixing, some effect, but it is mixed so much better. You can actually hear a personality, an intelligent monster who can still just completely fuck you up if you wanted. He's an imposing figure that shows up to show guts isn't as strong as you think he is, and hey, there's a guardian angel over guts in the big fight for Doldry, where Guts takes Zod's sword and fucking slices the head off the head knight and the horse at the same time in one swing. And then lastly, uh, Guts, I didn't want us to be this way. I told you, I warned you he was going to do this, but you didn't listen. No, straight up, Zod warns Guts, yeah, if you follow this man, you're going to die. Technically, Guts does try, but he's eventually drawn back. It doesn't matter because they're his friends. Mm-hmm. He's bound by duty. And pussy. All right, well, let's move on to some more duty and another pussy with Amari Williams in the 2016. I'm totally kidding. Amari Williams did a good job. Amari Williams, whole horse from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders dub. What? How the hell did you... Crap! On the upside, though, he hasn't noticed Mondata yet. I still have a chance. <clears throat> Shit! He's gonna see the book in his fingers. Your fingers. Mondata, hide your fingers! August from Oscar's Rap. Uh, this will do. It's just you and me. And Ghetto Hachia from Megalobox. That's some busted ass gear, little doggy. Definitely not a crowd pleaser. He must be screwing with me. You thought I'd let you take the lead? A very punk delinquent sounding sod. This is all I have to say. Amari Williams is a man. He's he's a very well voiced man, but Brimmer is a monster. 
Brimmer is a monster. Because Zod shows his, like, more humanoid form. And Amari Williams' voice would fit a human. But when, when, when Demon do what Demon do, Brimmer just, oh, man. Oh, shivers up the spine. Damn good. Damn, damn good. For our next character on the list, we will be covering the youthful, the hilarious, and the, well, later down the line, one of the most Chad characters of all time, Rickett, original voice by Michelle Newman. We saw with our own eyes how powerful he is. I'm pretty sure he's going to be a great addition to our army. Hey, Guts! What are you doing up here? Gossiping with the birds? <laughs> Thank you for your help during the battle. I only just made it because of you. I'm Rickett. I really admire you. I've never seen someone who was such an amazing fighter, except of course for Griffith. I've done nothing more than my duty. Who is Daisaku Kasuma from the Giant Robo animation? It's Daisaku! Um, I can't see anything on the monitor. Don't tell me that your new Shizuma drive crapped out on you already. Oh, it's not that, Daisaku. I just didn't want you to see me naked. Huh? Well, why not? It's not like I've hit puberty yet or anything. Oh, that's true. Well, perhaps maybe some other time, huh? What? Miss Kinray, please don't make fun of me. And Sasuke Sarutobi from Samurai Deeper Kyo. Two Muramasa longswords shouldn't exist in this world, and yet they do. So, which one is the real thing? You know there's only one way to answer that question. Yes, I do. Oh, and Judinka Gino from the Magic Users Club. Ava noye esta ketoro. It means magic always wants to play. Huh? Incantations bring out the magic that already exists in people and things. Magic is just waiting to be called upon. It just wants to have fun with everyone. Not really a prolific actor, but definitely a really good, youthful... This is an instance where a woman can voice a young male, and it sounds like a young man. Thank fucking God! Absolutely! This Ricket is perfect! This is a perfect Ricket. Voice cracks. Moments of like, uh, uh, but, but, it's, it, it's, it's perfect for a child soldier. And another main reason we say thank God is because the replacement is Erica Mendez who we recovered in Shaman King as Hal Asakura, but also Sailor Uranus from Sailor Moon, and Retsko from Agretzko. Polar opposite performance. <laughs> Michelle Newman is fantastic. First of all, I love extra spices like voice cracking. I think it's one of the most adorable things that a younger character could do. And it's not a fluke. If you watch the movies, she sounds the exact same. 10 years later. So that was a decision made by her and probably Centurna class. Yeah, it's cute. And it really sells his age separation from the others. Yeah, this kid is like, kid, you should be like in school. You should, you should be at home learning how to read from your nanny. Yeah, we're not against women voicing boys. They just have to be good at it. Fucking Hal Asakura with, uh, with how like how as Erica Mendez, you know Erica does fine here, but I I look I can't help it. Guts, it's been two years. You're alive. What have you been? I'm sorry, Rickard, but first things first. Casca, is she okay? Uh, uh, What's wrong? Casca's uh, gone. She's gone. It was about a month ago. We didn't have any other choice but to try and find her some food. She was barely eating. Casca's time in the mines took a real toll on her. And I love Erica Mendez. Just... She plays voices like Sailor Uranus and Agretzko better. Where they're obviously feminine, but they're more pronounced voices. Yeah, and it's like, look, everyone wants the original dub cast to come back. There were petitions for it, I saw them. But nothing feels more disappointing for me than Michelle Newman not coming back as Rickard as a young man. Because it is just... The perfect opportunity. There's, there's something about Rickard, you know? He's, he's so young and, and cute, and he just... 
age is so, so incredibly low. I want to see Michelle Newman just take it all the way home. And that's especially because Rickard was a kid when the series started. Yeah, no, he was legit a child. And then he grows up, and then he, like, ah, po- 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 post-eclipse. He, he, he goes to go study under Godo, the blacksmith. Okay, okay, hold on. You've been gushing about manga shit the entire time. Let me have my turn. Okay. Jesus, like, God, the arc is so fucking good, dude. Because it's, because mm-hmm. it is just, like, this kid who can't, who can't do much, but he just has spirit. He just loves the band of the hawk so much and just knowing that it t- tore him up that he wanted to be there he wanted to die with them with his friends if he could he felt guilty about not being able to be with them but being able to incorporate that sadness and that anger into something like blacksmithing to make swords for every single band of the hawk member the reason why him slapping griffith is so powerful is because it is so appropriate to me but it's also out of nowhere. Like, holy shit, it's out of nowhere. Well, maybe. But you gotta love the poetry of the youngest member of the Hawk, arguably the weakest, was the only one who touched Griffith, who hurt him in, in some way. You know, it probably didn't hurt Griffith, actually. It struck something harder than his physical appearance. Exactly. His presence, his pride. His generals watched this little kid go up and just and walk away. One of Griffith's underlings was like, that little bastard, I'll kill him! And then it's like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't. You'll make Griffith look bad. Ricker, will you join me? This isn't the Band of the Hawk anymore. The people around me? These fucking swords that I made in the ground, this is the Band of the Hawk. I'm the only one left. Whatever you're doing, whatever, but that is not where I belong. I belong with them. And thankfully, I was able to be a use to them. Maybe not while they were alive, but I'm able to respect the memory of everything that we did before then. The most Chad fucking thing! And that would have been great, amazing to hear as Newman. God, Rickard's such a based character, though. I loved it. I even told you, like, you're gonna love Rickard. Yeah, you did. It's funny, because it's like, the Golden Age arc was the most emotional moment of the series for me. And then, look, I love the action, and, and Berserk's art is amazing. Of course it is, but it wasn't hitting me as well. But then you got fucking... Rickett slapping Griffith, which I knew, but I didn't understand the context. Once I knew the context, it was so powerful. Casca coming back, just like, bam, 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 right at the end there. Like, like, God, Miura had shit to fucking say, and he knew how to stretch it out. A man who knew how to write a story and make everything count. Someone who made every word count, like Pippin. <laughs> Who didn't speak much at all. <laughs> like, I legit could not find anything for Pippin in, in, the, in, in the 1997 dub. Pippin! Get going! You heard me. Run! Get out of here while you still can! Don't be ah! ridiculous! <laughs> Do you have anything of note to say, though? For Pippin? Yeah, it was a voice befitting a gentle giant. But the, mainly the guy, he, he, he did, he was a stunt performer, he was a stunt coordinator. I don't know how he got into it. I mean, he would have had to, like, audition. Maybe he was trying to get into voice acting? You know, Jeff Ward's fine, but Patrick Seitz in the 2016... No, no, sorry, the film trilogy, Pippin doesn't voice in the 2016. Patrick Seitz... Perfect. Perfect. Patrick Seitz has become the badass... The badass big guy. 
and Dabber from My Hero Academia. Yes, Shoto! Huh? Have you finally accepted your purpose? That's it. Very good. This is the dawn of a new era for us. With my blood in your veins, you'll surpass me. You will live up to the reason I created you! Ira Kamagori from Kill a Kill. It's my mess, so I'll handle it. It'll take more than you lousy punks to make me cry. But even if I did shed a tear, I'd just wipe the damn thing away and then put you down! Three-star Goku uniform, Shaco Regalia! And Dio Brando from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood, and Stardust Crusaders. With my stand, I have the ability to rule the world! What can you do in the face of such overwhelming power? All right, here it comes! Behold! The, the world! world! <clears throat> <sighs> yeah, Patrick Sykes just nails Pippin. Big, strong guy, gentle nature, but will cave in someone's head. Honor-bound and dutiful, always supportive of his friends. It's Patrick Sykes. Perfect. Absolutely. And Jeff Ward never going to see this. This is basically the only thing that he did as far as I know. So it's like, yeah, let's give it to the guy who's actually experienced in voice acting and is actually appropriate to the role. Can you fucking imagine that, Will? Yeah. I could imagine it. What I can't imagine is dealing with our next guest because. Uh, well, we're talking about my favorite Band of the Hawk member. That's not Guts. And one of my favorite interpretations of that character, who comes back, really doesn't do much. Judo, the wingman of legends. So, what are you going to do now? Travel? Fight? I guess. And you? I don't know. Gather up whoever stays behind. Maybe put together a band of thieves. We should be able to scrape enough together to take pretty good care of Griffith. I'll come too. You're free from all this, remember? If a man can no longer stand, leave him behind. That's the rule, isn't it? I just can't do it this time. Now, Casca, she's a different story altogether. She's entirely too noble to run with a bunch of stinking bandits. I can't be a thief and have a conscience. It won't work. I mean it. Take her with you. Chris Cromer hasn't done much, and Kyle McCarley has definitely gained more of a reputation. You've forsaken us, haven't you? You have no obligation to us. But forget that. Find her. Save her. Kyle McCarley, Iruka sensei from Naruto. Hey, good evening. Oh, hi. Hey there. Welcome back. So, what's going on? Are you wrestling with some kind of problem again? Huh? Oh, no. I was just thinking about how truly glad I am that I chose the profession I did. Oh, I see. Well, what can I get for you today? Uh, a large miso char shoe ramen, topped with Naruto fish cake, please. One large miso char shoe ramen. You got it, coming right up. Nines from Near Automata. <laughs> the hell out of my goddamn memories! These belong to me and me alone! Get away from them! Preface. Judo is this very loose, very laid back, but he's, a, he's basically a marksman. He's good at throwing knives, he's good at shooting crossbows, he's very laid back, he's very good at observing things. And viewing everything as it is. He, he was a traveling bandit. And like borderline circus performer. He made most of his money swindling. And on his travels. He gains this medicine. This powder. Made by the elves themselves. Which in the beginning of Berserk. Before the eclipse. Monsters were not a thing. No one knew anything about monsters. They were just legends. This man got his hands on elf dust. He's like I'm probably never going to use this. So, Guts kills a hundred men in a night, but is wounded to the point of we cannot move him or we're going to rupture all of his cuts and he's going to bleed out. The man who just says, hey dude, 
I can't leave you behind. You, you've done so much for us, and you've saved my life, like, many times. This is elf medicine. It can cure anything. I'm going to use it on you. And then also about, when it comes to Casca, she seems to really like you. I like Casca too, but uh, I don't have a personality uh, for it. <laughs> Guts, be there for her. She likes you. She may not show it. And even during the eclipse, when everyone else is panicking, he's like, Guts! Casca! Go! And gives his life. Oh, it hurt me so much. It brings him to what I said earlier. You wanted to quit after the eclipse. You wanted to quit. <laughs> and I okay. don't blame okay. you. You okay. loved those characters. Okay, listen. Listen. First of all, I don't know how I got this information or something. I think I was talking to you and I was asking, has the feast ever been animated? And I, maybe you weren't listening. I don't know. But you said no. So as I'm watching the 97, I'm just kind of sunken in just like, oh, shit, I'm actually watching the feast going on. This is great. Because you call it the feast, not the eclipse. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> I, I sent you the, the fucking manga cover called The Feast, and you're just like, oh, here we go. But but whatever. So I was I was just like, oh, oh, this is great. Why do people not like this? It ends at the rape. <laughs> it ends at the rape. With no hint of any further continuation. Do you have any idea how fucking... Th one more episode was all that you needed. But no. It ends at the rape. I mean, they prefaced at the first episode being, oh, hey, this is Guts of the Black Swordsman. He's killing, like, the Snake Baron. So, yeah, they, they, do, they, they, they do live on past the eclipse. Oh, yeah, but... Yeah. God, that, that really got to me. I wish I could have been there to watch you go through everything and just enjoy it. <laughs> I was keeping you updated, you know that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so I was going through my research for judo, and I fucked up very briefly because I was watching the okay. Where the fuck is judo in the 2016 series? Because I was wondering, because like, he's dead. Where the fuck is he? And I noticed the scene of guts being really in despair because he lost Costco by going back to Rickard, and Judo and Corcus are just talking shit in his head. It's all mental. But I got so pissed off at the 2016 version, because I was thinking, oh, is, is this a change for the manga? I don't remember this from the manga. This is bullshit. They don't understand Judo. Why the fuck would they have him talk like that? I went on the phone. I ranted this to Will. He told me to chill the fuck out. <laughs> went back into the manga and the scene does exist it makes context so despite my bashing for the 26th cast I was way too hard on this and look in terms of Griffith did nothing wrong first of all I hate calling it that because it is so black and white it's, it's such black comedy yeah, but it's like, you know, my autism brain is thinking, like, I get the justification for it. What would these characters that we've gotten to know each other matter when all these characters that we don't know have already died? Because after the feast, Griffith makes a fantastic kingdom. He's a great leader, and him being able to live again and having those connections did that. Connections... Powerful generals control over a massive army of monsters to do good for the world, quote unquote. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, like, yeah, morally, Griffith was very wrong. But in terms of progress, I'm just like, well, whatever. Who, who cares about these guys? Who cares about these underlings when Judo is still great? Judo, Pippin, Corcus, they didn't matter. They were a stone in the road Griffith used to walk. But after this, after I thought that 2016 did my man Judo dirty, that's when I got it. You know, an autist will only give you stats. And technically, yes, 
these people were just stepped in the road in terms of Griffith. And I can see the progress that Griffith has made, and he is great. But at the end of the day, these characters are so fantastic and so memorable that even the slightest suggestion that they did judo or any of them dirty like that, these fictional characters, progress be damned, man. I fucking love these guys. They hurt him. You fell in love with the charms of Judo, the innocence of Ricket, the wholesomeness of Pippin, even the snarkiness of fucking Corcus. And then just out of nowhere, well, Corcus you expect, but Pippin, Judo, Casca, saying these horrible things to Guts? You're like, no, no, that can't be. And I had to remind him, Guts is in a terrible mental state. He's prone to possession. Spirits are hunting him. They brought the echoes in his mind to life. That is the power of Berserk. That is the power of Miura's writing. That's why I love it so much. No other manga could have the balls to do this to characters that you love. And there will never be a manga like Berserk. There will never be an anime like the 90s Berserk. And there will never be another Kentaro Miura. If you guys want Jodai Son, Karenin, Collins to voice those characters again, ask whichever licensor is working on it, hire Sinterna Class. He's the one who directed the original anime and the film trilogy. Get him back. He will make your Berserk anime that you want. Do not message Sinterna Class to do a dub. Do not fucking insult him. Because he's just one guy. I feel a lot better if you fucking insulted the licensors because, you know, it's like you'd be bothering like what, like 50 to 100 people as opposed to one guy who's is just trying to do his career. But even through all of that, nothing besmirches got the Berserk's legacy. Absolutely. Even in not. its most, even if it, even in its shittiest character, Corcus. Mark Sebastian did the 1997 series, but we couldn't find anything on him. He's Griffith's favorite pet. You realize you can't win. You might as well just get used to it. Of course, I am always here for you, should you ever decide to get rid of him. Casca, you and I could take care of this, and no one else ever has to know. Uh, 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 Sorry. Doug Airholes was in the film trilogy. This is the perfect occasion to tell you this. I've never liked you, and I finally know why. It's your face. You think you're so special. You just walk around brooding and judging all the time. You disgust me. Let me tell you something. You're also not the only one in the world who's got problems. It's people just like you who make me sick to my stomach. The voice of Asuma Sarutobi from Naruto. See these? They're my chakra blades. They're forged from a special type of metal that can actually absorb the bear's chakra nature. Whoa, sweet! Just as if you were finally sharpening the blade between the two halves of your chakra. Sharpening the blade between the two halves, huh? Exactly. Ready, go! And Jin Ichimaru from Bleach. <laughs> A gatekeeper who loses isn't supposed to open the gate. When a gatekeeper loses, it means death. Impale him. Shinzo! Bye-bye <laughs> now. Bill Rogers in the 2016 series. Captain of the raiding party. You harped about dreams of freedom, but left for your own selfish reasons, didn't you? You weren't there for the band of hawks in our greatest hour of need. How could I call someone like that a brother in arms? It was just, eh, for the most part. King Rome from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path. Lo, a century ago, it was then that my life was taken away from me. 
And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. Brock from Pokemon Advanced Generation. Uh. Pardon me, my name's Brock. Do you believe in love at first sight? Lucy, your gentle soul sparkles from within your calm and cool sweet self. Come on, Sparkle ah. Boy. Her hands are for battling, not holding. And Udian from the Street Fighter series. Bring Eleven into the simulation room. Choose whichever stage you wish. What? It's worthless if all it produces is inferiority. I will inspect the quality of its ability for myself. But he's... Don't test me! Apologies. Mark Sebastian is still my favorite. He's mine too. But Corcus was an eh character. I think that there is more to Corcus. Because Mark Sebastian plays him like a complete slimy dick sniveling coward and that's perfect you know it's it, every every group has that one guy who's only there for one guy yeah and you know sebastian just brought it all the way i could hear erholt and rogers aiming for that but they never commit to going all the way with corcus and erholt had a lot more lines than bill rogers and they sound exactly the same. Yep. But they can't keep up with the skeeziness that you need for Corcus. But it's also, I think that there is some important context with Corcus that does make Sebastian just soar over the top with them. You need to remember how important Corcus is to getting Guts into the Band of the Hawk. Because he's the guy who decided, fuck, let's just, we got horses, he doesn't, let's fucking try to rob this guy who just killed Pazuzo. Let's get some credibility. And he fucking murders everyone. Guts kills two horses, maims one guy, kills another guy, and puts Cork as fucking running away like a coward, making him look like a bad general. Because in the Band of the Hawk, he was one of the generals. And then they have to send Casca in to clean up his mess, and she gets her ass handed to her. So they have to send in the fuck. They have to send in the king <laughs> to fight a pawn. And the fucking king has to desperation tactic win. That's great in and of itself, but also you have to consider that whereas Mark Sebastian basically began the rise of the Band of the Hawk by provoking Guts, he's also the one who ended the Band of the Hawk morally. Because at the end of the 97 series, everyone finds out that Griffith is unable to fight anymore. He can't even move. He is a shadow of his former self. A shell. Corcus is the only character who just shouts it. He is the guy who, even if there was even the slightest bit of optimism in any one of those soldiers' minds, Corcus puts a nail in the coffin and brings everyone a fresh dose of reality that only someone with no filter like Corcus can do. And Sebastian plays it so perfectly. I am in hell! This was supposed to be our new beginning. Weren't we going to make a fresh start after we rescued Griffith? Wasn't that it? For a goddamn year now, we've lived like rats. The lucky ones, of course. The other half are dead. But have faith, they said. Once Griffith is back, he will lead us to glory. Bullshit! <laughs> Sebastian, who, whose performance of Corcus fucking gassed up Griffith to be the greatest thing and you should be honored for even being able to have the capability of being at his feet in a time of desperation. He's useless! Get rid of him! Didn't you, like, gas this man up for uh, for for years? No, I don't I don't see it that way. I do think that Cork is, is an intelligent guy. Like, is someone as He's much a of a... ball. He's a suck-ass. He was sucking up to Griffith thinking he can get more out of him, but once Griffith had nothing to offer... He wasn't my friend. He was my employer. Yeah, and he can't I, employ me no more. Look, I get that. But why would someone like him still stick around for a year and have a terrible experience if he didn't have even the slightest bit of hope that maybe things will change? Maybe I'll get the life back that I wanted. Griffith got us to this height before. Why can't he do it again? I think that Cork is, is a character that more than anyone really understood what Griffith was able to give them. I mean, just seeing Cork is 
talking to Bar with Guts. Like, yeah, of course we're going to want to follow Guts because it's like he wants to follow his own path. But also, you can kind of get Cork is being very blunt about just like, listen, we have it really good here. And, you know, he led Thieves and he sucked at it. So being behind somebody who knew what he was doing, I can see why someone like him would want want to stick around and want to get that glory because Again, he's he with wants someone. to piggyback. He wants to skis his way to the top. As a soldier and as a general in the band of the Hawk, he's, he's, dude, fucking Gaston, it could do better than Corcus. Corcus is inept, but he's a tactician. And the, the whole bar scene, that was just him trying to moral grandstand on Guts to keep Guts submissive because Corcus is afraid of Guts. And even he could predict, yeah, if Guts leaves, we're fucked. He's smart. You said it yourself, he's smart. So he's going to try and demoralize Guts as much as he can to make sure, don't fuck me on this. Just play your fucking role so I can have my happily ever after. And then when, when, when the test of faith fails and the monsters come, he doesn't go down fighting. He sees a pair of titties and he goes to a monster and the monster fucking eats him. <laughs> That's funny. Not the heaviest fall from grace, but the most disrespectful way to go out. He just gave up. I don't know. Like, I think that there is some truth to what he was saying. And, you know, like, sometimes you just need that dick to tell people how it is. I mean, for someone as skeezy as him, for him to be essentially a rat for a year waiting for Griffith, like, that's got to mean something. You would think that someone like Corcus would just turn tail and run as soon as things got shitty. Well, it's like that one friend who... Like, hey, dude, remember that one cool guy we hung out with in high school like 10 years ago? He was the coolest, right? What if we got him back? And then you get him back and he's like, he's a changed man. He's not that punk. He's not the punk tough guy, the cool guy that was like protect you. Now he's like some fucking office man who barely likes to drink or smoke. It's like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, but you say that as if everybody else saw what Griffith became and were like, no, we're still going to stick with you. That's not what happened. All the band of the Hawk who saw that Griffith was a shell of his former self knew that, no, the Hawk is dead. Corcus just emphasized it to everyone. No, people still would have followed Griffith. It's just that he wouldn't have been able to fucking be the knight in shining armor that they would, but he, he survived torture. He can slightly move. He's still alive. Yeah, but everything about Griffith, his face was chopped off. He he can't move. He can't use a sword. Griffith had literally nothing left. Pretty much everything, except for his brain, to get him to where he was originally, that was all gone. Can you honestly tell me that if the Golden Age arc continued with Griffith like that, that they would have ended up back at the top? Well, no, because he he, he committed high treason. Thank you. But even at the thought of high treason, even the hawk were like, no, no, she must have liked it. She clearly did. She showed emotion for towards him. Which would have exposed the king as a person who just wanted to fuck his own daughter. Which everyone would have been like, oh, that's kind of gross. Why would you do that? <laughs> and even did. I don't know, Will. Maybe you're not as big of a berserk fan as I am. You just like seeing the good in everything. Corcus is meant to be a shithead. He was that one personality that, like, every group of characters has that one shithead that no one likes. Like, in Naruto Shippuden, they had Sai. Like, who is this uppity guy? Who cares? <laughs> Fuck, Griffith did nothing wrong. Did Corcus do anything wrong? Be inept as a soldier and as a leader. Have to rely on Guts to save his ass. I'm not denying that, but I just think there's more to it. Further driving Guts away from leaving the Band of the Hawk after the whole, we have a good here. We don't need you anymore. Well, he... Actually, yeah, hold on. Corcus was the one who fucking threw it in Guts' face. Yeah, we don't need you. No one likes you. You're just a fu We only like you because you do shit for us. No one actually likes you, Guts. You want to go? You sound like a damn woman. You want to go? Go. Fuck you. And he's like, well, okay, maybe I will. Well, and then Corcus... Griffith loses guts, and then Griffith goes mad, and then he tries, and then he rapes, question mark, asterisk, 
the princess and the king gets mad and makes them the enemies. So he fucked up. Everyone else was trying to keep Guts around because even they knew, yeah, no, we'd be nowhere without Guts. Well, I if Guts never joined the band of the Hawk, would they have become the Holy Knights of the Hawk? For Midland. Well, like, think about the bar scene. And I doubt that Farkas was trying to keep Guts around. He was just thinking about, just like, yo, we got it good here. Why do you want to leave? When Guts was like, no, I still don't care. Then Farkas like, no, nah, fuck it, whatever. I tried to convince him to stay rich, but no, that didn't happen. Fuck you. <laughs> Guts is a rational character. If he, if Corvus wouldn't have done the whole fuck you, we don't need... If he would have not had his arguments of you're nothing without Griffith, you're nothing without us, go on, go get yourself killed out there. You're nothing. We're the reason why you're good. Oh, reverse psychology. That just challenges Guts to, okay, I'll fucking show you that I'm good. I'm liking this. Final thoughts. It's a landslide victory for 97. 2016 is shit. 97 is the shit. And Sword of the Berserkers was a pleasant surprise. Best, worst, weirdest. Hey! <laughs> yeah, basically. Full circle. Uh-huh. I would like to thank you for going on this Berserk journey with me. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy. I've been trying to get, on it, get you on it with me for years. But I'm glad you finally were like, eh, sure, why not? Yeah, it took me for the artist to die, but hey, better late than never. Yep. And then here's to more to come. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let you feel it out for a little bit because you know. You found the latest chapter as an ideal ending. Yeah, I did. I felt like that it was well symbolic. You get to see guts being a dad. You get to see Costco be a mom. Isidro I... is there. I mean. <laughs> She's cute, okay? What do you want me to say? You see, Dro's the boy. The monkey dude. Oh, shut up. <laughs> and the Moonlight Boy is the Moonlight Boy. But also, you know, we get to see Shierke being in, in, in an environment where she flourishes. We get to see the development of Farness. Serpico calms down because Farness is happy. Yeah, you, you can see that, like, everyone can just chill out there. It's literally the perfect place for everybody. Because it's like, even Guts... You can see that he's past his peak. Like, he can't see out of that eye anymore. He is getting older, and he'll only get weaker over time. It only makes sense that... Look, I realized from that ending, Griffith wasn't the ending. Casca was. And you know what? If Griffith is not causing trouble for anybody, and Guts is calm, and Guts has Casca back, then I think everything will be okay. And yeah, I know, Casca still can't look at Guts. but. Farnes said it perfectly. It's that, yeah, it's not going to be easy to come back to this. Like, your mind is still fucked. But with all of us together, eventually we will get to that point. You will be able to look at Guts again. And I found that so uplifting and wonderful and positive. You know, I didn't need one last chapter where it's like, oh, here's an epilogue of what everyone was doing. You can kind of get an idea of it already. Until, you know, Griffith conquers all of Midland and then goes after the Elf Kingdom. Well, yeah. And then Guts has to fight. And sure, it's still going, but... I, I, can, I can justify my head that this could be an ending. Who knows? Miura set a really high standard, but his staff under him kept to that standard. There's a reason that he kept them around. His, his attendants, his protégés. I want to see what they can do to continue the legacy of their master. They loved him as a boss. They cared about him. They still care about him. I want to see what more they can do. I'm hopeful for them. And if that means that Berserk is now going to be the side project, not the main project, so be it. I'd rather a good, seldom release than a shitty, fastly produced, mediocre, uh, rushed finish. Yeah, obviously I hope that it goes well, but I have never seen a situation where the artist, the original creative vision behind a work dies and it stays the same level of quality or gets better. It only gets worse from my experience. But hey, if it still stays good, if what you told me is true that Miura did leave his plans laid out, then great. But I'm not going to 
lose any sleep over it until I know that it is good. I, I want to give it, like, I don't know, another volume, maybe. Ten chapters. That's fair. And you guys in the audience, let us know what you think. Were you guys satisfied by Miura's ending? Do you think that it should continue, or do you think that we should just leave it this time capsule? What was your favorite anime cast? Some of your favorite voice actors from Berserk, and did Corcus do anything wrong? What were your favorite moments? Yes, he did. <laughs> what were your favorite moment, more moments? Were it the more subtle things with the character development, or was it the really epic battles that Berserk brought to the table that Corcus wasn't a part of? <laughs> Jesus, I, I could have sworn that you were going to be the guy who can justify defending everyone in the Band of the Hawk. Nope. Okay, fair. Some, 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 I, I, I'm a firm believer that some characters are just built to be shitty for the sake of contrast. Sure, he was ambitious. Everyone in the Band of the Hawk was. He was just shallow that, as compared to everyone else. I'm not saying that he's not, not an unapologetic dick, but I'm saying that he's done things that were appropriate to the story and appropriate to his character. If Griffith didn't show the competence when Guts showed up, he would have left. Out of all the Band of the Hawk members, he would have been the first one to leave. And that's considering Guts, who's like, yeah, no, until I get stronger, I have to. I have to be here. Corcus would have left at the drop of the hat. The moment, oh yeah, Griffith's not profitable anymore? All right, I'm out. Because that's his personality. Well, fuck you and your opinions. And fuck you and your opinions. <laughs> 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 Every time. I fucking told you. <laughs> Every fucking time. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this, remember, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow us on social media. You can find us on basically everything if you follow us at slash Real Voice Cast, or follow us on your favorite podcast platforms at anchor.fm slash Real Voice Cast. I've been Justin. I've been Will. And we'll see you guys next time. Keep on walking, strugglers. Keep on walking. Peace out.